Hello, I'm Henning from Make It, and uh, now I'm going to explain the code that is on the drone on the Airbit. Um, the transmitter code is been explained in the coding tutorial for uh, the hand controller, but the receiver uh, is not that well documented. Uh, it's supposed to be a ready-made code that you can download and uh, use. But now I will go through the different uh, code parts and try to explain how it actually works. So we can start with uh, the on start section here and uh, here we are setting the radio channel that we will be using that is matching the transmitter radio channel and just as in our transmitter we are using the show uh, number feature to just uh, display uh, briefly briefly display the radio uh, number when we start up and then this has been implemented into the system with the radio uh, block uh, battery factor is uh, a number that has been multiplied with the analog read from the pin zero because the uh, drone uh, will measure the battery voltage on the pin zero to monitor and uh, make sure that the battery doesn't uh, drain out completely. There is a system that makes the drone land automatically and this requires us to measure the battery voltage. Uh, so battery factor is what you need to multiply the analog read pin width to get uh, actual battery voltage. We will get back to that. The low battery limit is the limit for when the drone will automatically land. Uh, the lithium battery is becoming um, 4.2 volt when it's full, but when it's empty, it's approaching 3 volts. Uh, so our limit is now set to 3.4 volts. Uh, the battery empty uh, variable is set to false. If this is set to true, the drone cannot start. So this is kind of a lock that will be uh, added uh, when uh, the drone has um, um, triggered the low battery uh, limit. Then it will lock so it cannot start before you charge the battery or if you really want to use a low battery again uh, you can also restart the code but then you will take off with a very low battery and that is not recommended and this part is uh, setting up the serial which will communicate with the control board that is under the micro bit and it will set up a serial connector that is outputting the signal on pin 1 and is able to listen uh, to receive signal on pin 2, but this is not currently in use. Uh, in the forever, uh, we have a few different things. So first we are calculating the actual battery voltage and we just uh, receive um, the true voltage in millivolts. So we were taking the battery factor and multiply it uh, with the analog read on P, pin 0. Um, this is uh, also for battery. Uh, this is a uh, detection for charging. If you charge uh, the battery, uh, there will be a different reading on the pin zero. Uh, we are trying to detect it here uh, just to show an icon. Uh, icon battery charging. And here is an animation that has been shown. And this animation you can change if you want. So this is just to show that we are charging. Uh, here we are checking for if the battery is lower than our limit and if it's limit we are doing a low battery uh, function and uh, let me see if I can find this function yeah so the low battery function is uh, either showing us a low battery icon or a dead battery icon and it's even uh, preventing us from flying so uh, if the battery is completely dead uh, it will set arm and throttle to zero so we cannot start uh, 
And this is actually a two-step process. First, uh, the drone will descend and then later it will uh, completely be uh, disarmed. So there's like a, a little uh, uh, two-step process. Let's go back to the forever loop. Also, the main screen, uh, screen uh, function is to show the display, the, the values that we see now. But we, we will not call this if we have to show the low battery or dead battery icon. That's why we only show it here. If the bar anything problems with the battery or you want to show charging, we are not going to show the main screen because you cannot show both. And if the battery is empty, uh, it will set arm to zero to prevent you from taking off. The failsafe feature is uh, in case you lose uh, radio, in case your radio transmitter loses power. And there is a uh, feature that is waiting for a few seconds uh, before triggering uh, a failsafe feature. So we can take a look at that function. So here is comparing the, the system time, the actual uh, clock in the microbit, with uh, the failsafe counter, which is supposed to be updated constantly. But if you don't receive radio signal, this failsafe counter will not be updated. And then this running time will quickly be above the failsafe counter, plus 1000, that means one second. So if the current time is more than one second, since we last uh, updated this. So if it's more than one second since we received a radio signal, it's going to set the throttle to 30 for uh, emergency landing. So if, if the throttle is as low as 30, uh, it's gonna land because you need about 50 to 60% throttle to stay in the air. And then it will uh, zero out the roll pitch and the yaw to make the drone stay level by its emergency landing. And then if it goes another four seconds, so if we are five seconds since we received the radio signal, it will disarm as well. So the idea is that the drone is landing for four seconds and then at the fifth second, we also stop the propellers. Um, let's find the main loop again. Yeah, so the failsafe is being run just before this part because here we are actually controlling the drone. We are sending our throttle, yaw, pitch and roll uh, through the pin one on the serial. So this is the most, maybe the most important uh, function. It's uh, putting the, uh, um, the flight directions into a protocol. So it's kind of... Um, coding it into a special signal that the uh, blue airbit card is interpreting and here if you want to control the servo outputs you can actually add some numbers here so if you want to have a little servo to maybe uh, control some you can drop a little package or uh, something fun with the servo motor you can control this by adding values here and here we are actually sending uh, the battery voltage back. So on your uh, transmitter, on your radio control, if you want, you can actually monitor how much battery you have. And you can also monitor the acceleration. This is very uh, handy if you want to analyze what's going on in the drone. So here you can actually input whatever sensor you want to use. You can go on sensors, you can uh, measure light level, temperature, or even compass, if you wish. Uh, so, um, then we have the main screen, which is very similar to the one on your transmitter. It's showing the trowel on the left side here, as a, a kind of pixel moving up and down. Then we have the roll and pitch, which is this center dot that is moving in the same direction as your tilt uh, the transmitter 
So it's kind of just showing a basic version of your roll and pitch values. Um, then it's actually a measurement for the yaw which is on top of the screen. So this one is moving right and left if you change the yaw on your transmitter. This is the battery measurement uh, graph, um, making a little display showing how much battery you have. If the battery is uh, high, this bar graph will be up here and then going downwards uh, as you drain the battery. And then there is actually this blinking light you see down here. This is a blinking feature. It's checking the system time and uh, seeing if the system, system time is below 500 and uh, 250. This is just a trick to make a light blink indefinitely or uh, forever. And it's supposed to show you that right now there is no battery connected. And this one is an uh, experimental safety feature. If you crash and land upside down, it's supposed to set the arm to zero and stop the drone. However, uh, the radio can still receive um, signals. So if you still receive a radio signal here, they will kind of... Um, both try to alter the arm so I'm not sure if this actually works but uh, I recommend you to just try to hold the drone uh, you start the drone and you pick it up hold it upside down and see if it actually stops and this is the receiver part of the radio which is matching the transmitter part if you remember on the transmitter you are sending radio signals with a letter and a number and those uh, letters are P, A, R, T and Y uh, short uh, party here we are looking for the exact same uh, num uh, letters and we are extracting the numbers and updating the corresponding values to those Letter. So here we receive our pitch, our arm, our roll, throttle and yaw and updating those variables. And here we are actually resetting the failsafe counter. So every time we receive a signal we are updating the, the failsafe counter so it kind of matches the running time to prevent the failsafe from knocking in. Yeah, and this is the battery voltage calculation. Uh, it's taking down log re read and measuring, uh, multiplying with the battery factor. And this is actually a low pass filter. So what it's doing is just averaging the values uh, because uh, the, uh, the battery measurement can actually fluctuate. It can change very rapidly uh, when you're flying. So this is actually uh, averaging and make the battery measurement more smooth. It will prevent uh, the battery graph from uh, uh, shaking and also preventing your low battery, uh, the Autoland system. It's making the Autoland system more reliable because your battery voltage is not jumping up and down. I think that's it. Uh, if you have more questions, I do really recommend you to go to our Facebook group. Uh, you just go to Facebook and search for Go Airbit and you can join us there and ask us more questions regarding this. 
And uh, thank you for watching. I'm Henning from uh, Make It, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Thanks.